Hi, everybody. This is Krista and Karen, who looks like she might currently be frozen. So hopefully she'll pop in if she can in a moment. As you can see, we are both coming to you from what looks like our vehicles. Oh, there she went. So we are moving fast and furious, right? This is Thursday. Next Thursday will be the Thursday night before we all fly out and head to our first show in Fort Myers. We cannot wait to see everyone. And if I'm the only one on this and Karen can't pop on, I'll do my best to monitor comments and chats. So if you say something and I miss it, I apologize. Karen may pop back in here in a minute. We're out both finishing up some final things. You know, when we started our Facebook Lives a year ago in March, we started with a focus on safety. And we know we've talked about that a lot, but the reality is it's a great subject. It's a perfect subject for everything, whether it's the firearms world or the archery world. And so we want to reflect on that again as a foundation before we head out on the road and meet new guests and um, see some old friends, right? Because hopefully we'll see you guys on the road. So let's talk first with firearm safety. And I know we've gone over the safety rules, but I want to go over them again. And I want to remind you that there are more than one way or there is more than one way to say the four main firearm safety rules. As a matter of fact, you'll see different uh, teaching protocols or um, syllabuses use different words, but they all mean the same thing. So here they are quick and, quick and fast, right? Keep that muzzle pointed in a safe direction or not at anything you are not willing to destroy. Let's define a safe direction, right? So the muzzle first is where the projectile or the bullet leaves the firearm. Okay, so the safe direction is only at a target if you are training, right? And you have to know that it's easy for our brains to think, well, the target is that way and I just need to move my body a little bit this way. But that's not in a safe direction. The target is this way. So as you learn and grow as a firearms person, you want to recommend, you want to recognize that sometimes um, you'll do dry fire practices and such where that will come into play. And even if it's unloaded and safe, we still follow those rules. So muzzle point in a safe direction. The second one, right? Here's a big one. Finger off that trigger until we're ready to shoot. Some people say, finger off that trigger until your eyes are on your sights and your sights are on your target. So that finger off the trigger means straight, high, along that slide or, or up on the cylinder near the revolver, not way down here, right? So high. Treat every firearm as though it's loaded, whether it's a dummy gun or a real gun or a firearm or a gun that you know is unloaded. Someone said, hey, this is unloaded. Treat it as though it's loaded. Check it. Clear it, verify where it, that it's unloaded, but still, muzzle in a safe direction, finger off that trigger until you're ready to shoot. And finally, be aware of your target and what's beyond it. That's knowing where you're aiming and that beyond that, there are many, many things. Whether it's right behind it or around it, even above it, recognize that fact. Now, we talked about firearms. Let's, let's transfer those over to archery. They all apply the same way. Whether the projectile is a bullet or an arrow, you must follow those safety rules. And then by following those rules, you stand strong as someone who is a responsible shooter. Now let's take it to the next step. Let's think about other forms of safety, right? What about eyes and ears on the range? So I know that there are many of us as instructors that have heard, um, People say, well, I'm shooting outside. Why protect my hearing? Those are critical pieces when you're shooting a firearm. Eyes and ears. That's part of your safety. I see Karen's trying to pop back in. We'll see. Hey, hey can you hear us now? I can. Oh, my okay. God. Hey, we this are is real life. Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, 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 Karen. How's everybody we doing? Let me get in my car because it's cold in Alabama, y'all. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. Hi. Hi. We were just talking about firearm safety. I went over some face the firearm safety rules and, and basically took them and paralleled them to the archery world. 
And we were moving on to things like range safety with protecting our hearing and our vision. We were right there when, bam, you popped in and said hello. So we're glad you're back. <laughs> yeah, y'all know, did Krista tell you that she shot a bow this weekend? It was pretty awesome. I haven't told them yet. <laughs> oh, I, I ruined your surprise. You did really great. Hey, y'all, you know, um, we kind of always come back to safety, right? It's our go-to thing just as a reset um, Chris is writing this great series of articles right now, and we're getting ready to release our newsletter um, tomorrow, actually. And um, one of the, one of the things she talks in there is about resetting your safety. And we got to think about that in terms of our firearm safety as well. Um, we talking to our children about it. It's good to revisit that all of the time. Um, not only those safety rules, but then do you have the equipment, like Krista said, that you need to be safe with the right ears and i mean i know it's not a shameless plug for our partners but you all know that we are partnered with walkers um right now um from gsm outdoors and they have hearing protection for every member of your family which is cool and so you know when ben gets to shoot he gets to he's getting his little own set of walkers hearing protection i can't wait uh to get him shooting a little more seriously now that we know he is addicted like his grandma white car <laughs> maybe it comes like it's a genetic thing i don't know but um you know karen you brought up a good point about that resetting your safety that is a focus of our safety article this month and even on the range i think that is a place that it's easy to become complacent whether you're an experienced shooter or you're that new shooter and you got out there and you got so because you hit exactly where you wanted to hit what's the first thing you want to do Woo! you know you're celebrating right right and we have to remember we got to reset that as soon as as soon as that shot happens bam we're in the next move and not take the wrong step put the firearm down celebrate please celebrate but do it safely right or right? like when when you shoot your i won't say names but when you shoot your first deer and you're all by yourself in the stand and you're like, what do I do? And it's like, put your gun on safe first. <laughs> like, right? Get your finger off the trigger. Let's make sure that we we're safe now. And then let's just wait. So uh, that was a fun call. And the person that called me knows who that was, but <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, go ahead, Kristen. I was going to say, I think that we can apply that reset to pretty much everything in life. And we were fortunate, uh, Karen and myself, and one of our other instructors had a little private time with Chuck Haggard. Um, if you know who he is, he's an incredible trainer. Uh, his company, Ag Agile Training, he is um, retired, yet not retired, law enforcement. I think is how you put that, right? He retired and then he kind of stepped back in. He's a, he's a great um presenter when it comes to situational awareness and he does an incredible series on pepper spray but he really kind of drove it home for us that resetting our safety is important every step we take one of his best examples was all right so we pulled up in the grocery store and we were good we watched everything around us right we went into the store and we went shopping and then we're excited we got our groceries we got to get home feed our kids maybe our cell phones ring and we step out of the grocery store did we pause? Did we look left and right? Have we have we reassessed the situation or are we just nose to the grindstone and tumble, tunnel vision to the car? Right? right. Things like Yeah, I have to tell you, I think as people start getting out more, we're going to see, you know, we we're all so excited to be out and doing normal things that our awareness, our situational awareness will go down. Um, if we don't focus on it and make sure we make it a priority, that's always the most important thing is making sure your own safety and the safety of your loved ones is your priority. Um, and just thinking about it for half a second will really change the way you're looking at things like right now. So let's, let's, let's do me. Okay. I'm you are, I'm totally into what I'm doing right now. Did I get in my car and lock my doors? so look I did now right because I'm sitting in my car and outside of I'm getting my hair done y'all I'm sorry <laughs> outside of a salon 
And as I look around, there's a car dealer, not a car dealer, but like a car parts dealer next to me. There's some ratty old cars there. There's some nice cars. And then I'm bucked up against a, a Mapco on the other side of me. So did I even know that I was parked next to those two things? No. <laughs> like, I'm a bad example, I guess, of resetting your safety. But these are things that are important. We can't be so in tuned with what we have to do and what we're trying to do and what we're enjoying doing that we lose sight of our own situational awareness. Because how easy would it be for somebody that wanted my car to reach in here and yank me out or and I'm not even paying attention. So they would be at my door in my car before I even had a chance to react. And so we've got to not be paranoid. Don't be paranoid. No. No, be confident. Stop being confident. Yeah. So now I feel better because I've taken a second and I've assessed my my safety. And we've got to do that every time we're on the range, too, with the people that are around us. Is there a range safety officer on, on site or is it, a, is it a public range without a range safety officer? What are the people doing next in the bay next to me? Um, do I have all the right equipment? Am I practicing good firearm safety? Um you know, am I walking away? So this is something I saw the other day. Somebody was at the range and they set their gun down on the table that was there for their use at the line. And they walked away and left their gun there. Who's responsible for the security of their gun? Anybody? Krista, you know, who's responsible for that gun? Might be the person that owns it and put it there, right? <laughs> that person it's exactly only, exactly right? it, it's like appendage to your body you have to take that responsibility and there's no other unless you transfer the responsibility and saying okay friend um i'm gonna use you as my example get karen i've really got to go to the restroom and all of my gear is here on the table and with a conversation with your right. friend i'm gonna leave you in charge of all of this gear right i've right acknowledged back. And I've got it. I'm not going to walk away from it. Yeah. Right. So you just have to always think about these things. It, it's funny. Uh, it's it's not funny. I, I meant to say it is not funny when people take firearm safety lightly. You know, we all have, um, thanks, Scott, I saw great ambassadors, but we all have that responsibility to be safety ambassadors for firearm safety because it is what's going to keep our industry alive and keep our sport alive. And the more we can educate people on how shooting sports is a safe activity that you can do with your family, that you can do no matter what your physical fitness level is, you can do, no. I mean, there's, there's just no discrimination in shooting sports, none. Even if you have a physical handicap, there's always an accommodation. There's, there's somebody that's in, been in some great gizmo to help you participate. And so, um, we can't take safety lightly because it's these um, neglectful accidents. They're not even accidents. I don't know what we want to call neg- them. They're absolutely they're, right. Yeah, it, that that negligence it shines a bad light on all of us in shooting sports and and also you know our children. We have a responsibility to make sure they understand those firearm safety rules. Right, everybody. It's keep your finger off the trigger till you're ready to shoot. Always know your target. It's be- and what's beyond my favorite always 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 treat a gun like it's loaded that's my favorite one i did oh krista i did a podcast today and always keep your muzzle pointing in a safe direction i won't forget that one. somebody will call me out but I, did, I was gonna call you out <laughs> i did a i did a podcast today and it was so cool we'll we'll put the details on here later you guys um but I talked to them about what we do with kids at the counter. So we use snap caps at the counter and we will take um, two rounds, put them in the magazine without the child seeing what we're doing. We'll show them, Hey, here's the magazine. We're going to load it in the snap cap. It won't hurt. Then we rack the slide and we eject the round and then we drop the magazine, but we don't let them see the end. So they don't know whether there's a round in the end or not. And we cover it. And we ask them, with the slide closed, the magazine out, is the gun loaded or unloaded? Aha! It's very interesting to watch. Some children know. Their parents have done a good job. But some children don't know. 
and then we educate them. And that's why you always treat a gun like it's loaded. And so if you guys are at home and you have some snap caps and children, it might be a good exercise for you to do to really drive home the point that you always treat a gun like it's loaded because you just, unless you've physically checked, you don't know. And even after you physically checked, you still should treat it like it's loaded so that no mistake, no negligence ever can occur. Right. right? Anything you have at home, all dry fire exercises, period, first, first and foremost, bam, everything is unloaded and all ammunition is in a different room. So any training you're doing like that at home, don't even just set it to the side in a bowl, right? It's an effort that you made. You went out of the room, everything's unloaded, and you go to what we would consider a safe area to do that dry fire training, no live ammunition. Uh, I wanted to follow up with one thing before we jump off tonight because it's already been 16 minutes. You know, we talk about that those firearm safety rules and encouraging our children and treating it as a family and going to the range and teaching that piece. But there are so many families that won't start that till they feel like their child's old enough to understand or respond in the engagement. But in reality, if you're communicating with them every day and they can't communicate back because they're so long, so young, you can still teach them firearm safety. And it starts with those Eddie Eagle rules, right? And stop, don't touch, get an adult, run away, that concept. And you start there or you even move into the firearms part. I, that's kind of that's kind of like my little thing in my pocket because for those of you that know, I was married for 12 years to a wonderful man, uh, very dedicated law enforcement officer who felt like to teach our children safety was not the right plan. It was we should keep the firearms hidden from them. And they were in middle school before they were ever exposed to firearms and firearm safety. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful because they didn't go anywhere that I know of where they didn't were exposed to a firearm and didn't know what to do. But gosh, we have such an opportunity with our young people, right? And to, to educate them. All right. It's been six minutes. I started this talking about, we are on that final countdown, right? We are ready. We are. Karen and I spent the last two days um, in the trailer, working the really tra hard, getting things ready, organizing it. And to all our staff, don't mess with our organization. <laughs> Getting it ready. Get it full. It is uh, it's so exciting. Hopefully all of you have seen the pictures and the videos of the new wrap and the announcement we did that last week. Our partners are absolutely amazing and incredible. And, and it's because of them that we get to connect with you and you can come into the trailer, right? It's, it's really amazing. So we are looking forward to seeing you guys in Fort Myers in a week and two days. Yes. And then uh, the week after in Daytona. In Daytona for the Daytona 500, baby. We'll, we'll be at Bass Pro, but we will hear the track because it's right <laughs> across the street. Yes. And uh, we're hoping that we find a way because, you know, our truck kind of mirrors the Noah Grayson car. So we hope that we can get a picture with our semi next to his car sometime there. You know, so go we might. And he's. And, I may take a shoot like a girl decal and be slight criminal and go, I can tag it. I can tag it. Can't tag it. I can't no. tag it. Come on. All right. No, okay. I won't tag. It. No, no. But so really, Noah, go look at Noah and ask our driver. I think he's number nine. He drives yeah. a true temper bass pro car and you'll notice there's one difference. It's obvious. And his, his stripe is orange and ours is the magenta. So other than that, we are pretty spot on and similar. Yep. All right, everyone joining in tonight. It's been 18 minutes. Thank you so much for popping on with us from the road. And, and of course, we had technical difficulties as always. Uh, so one thing, so for our prize for this week, <sighs> let's ask them, let's ask la ladies and gentlemen, please list one firearm safety rule that you're going to share with someone else today. So not just list the rule, but that you're going to share with someone today and make today firearm safety day and tell someone you love, remember your firearm safety rules and we'll pick a winner and we'll do, um, let's see, I have a, I have a rift hat on, so let's do a rift hat. All right. Um, we'll send a rift hat in the mail to one lucky winner. And I think Krista will reach out to the winner of last week. Yes, which I don't um, have. I'm sorry. I'm in the car. That's okay. Not with me. We'll so, and we'll send you your hat pack too. I think we did hats last. Yes. So, we did hats. 
guys are fantastic. We will see you from the road uh, very soon. We can't wait to wait for you guys to come experience Shoot Like a Girl. Um, and please follow us on Instagram too, y'all. All right. Take care. Bye.